continuing discussion of Sri Vishnu Sahasranam. In the last three talks, I discussed the name Achintya, and I thought I'd more or less covered it, given an overview, but then I thought that his Achintya Shakti, as it works in this world, that's another whole big topic which I'm just going to speak a little bit more about. Quoting from the Vishnu Purana, as quoted in Srila Prabhupada's books in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Shaktaya Sarvabhavanam Achintya Jnana Gocharaha Yato To Brahmanas Yatas To Sargadya Bhava Shaktaya Bhavanti Tapatam Shrishtha Pavakasya Yatoshnata. All the creative energies which are inconceivable to a common man exist in the supreme absolute truth. <clears throat> These inconceivable energies act in the process of creation, maintenance, and annihilation. O chief of the ascetics, just as there are two energies possessed by fire, namely heat and light, these inconceivable creative energies are the natural characteristics of the absolute truth. So, what do we understand from this? Fire has heat and light. Without heat and light, it's not fire. Why does it have heat and light? Well, you can do a minute scientific analysis, but it's just the way it is. It's just natural that it is. That is the inconceivable energy of fire and sarva karana karanam, the cause of all causes, Krishna. He is the inconceivable source of all energies that we see acting wonderfully within this world. We, uh, at least our scientists, they look out at the cosmos beyond and they try, but they can't really work out what's going on. They have some idea, but not really much of an idea after so many, many thousands of astronomers and physicists trying to work out what's going on and then even at the atomic level also we can't understand why how things are going on it's Krishna it's his creative power his creative energy by, by which everything comes into being is maintained and destroyed and it's really futile to try to understand it all because we'll never understand it and even if you do understand to some extent about all subatomic energies and macroscopic workings of the universe what's the benefit I mean, you're still you're still within the universe you have to suffer birth death old age and disease just accept how is it going on by his inconceivable potency we don't have to study all this Science, it's just a, put it all together, it's a massive waste of time. And you may say, well, you're using the technology produced by science. Yeah, we are, it's there, we'll use it. As you have gone to so much trouble to make it all, we'll use it to tell you that you're all wasting your life without trying to understand Krishna. Here's a quotation from Srila Prabhupada's purport to Madhya Leela of Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 20, text 117. The living, the living entity is originally part and parcel of Krishna and is therefore the superior energy of Krishna. He is endowed with inconceivable minute energy that works inconceivably within the body. Yeah. Because the spirit soul is within the body it works in ways again that even so many doctors are studying for so many years and scientists are studying so many years and there's so many things they still don't understand about how the body works or how it goes wrong or what we can do to get it right when it goes wrong it's all krishna's inconceivable minute energy that's within the material sphere, which is only a tiny part of Krishna's 
massive energies. It's all under Krishna's control. It's achintya. Atheists don't want to think that there can be something so greatly beyond themselves. But even the universes, or the multiverses, or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's Krishna. They just don't want to submit, that's all. Rascals. Going on, name 837 in Vishnu Sahasranam is Bhayakrit, one who makes fear or who causes fear. Woo! Yeah, fearful existence in this material world. It's a funny thing that although fear is not a pleasant emotion, people in one sense seem to like it. And therefore they go to movies in which they're sitting on the edge of their seat, watching some fearful situation. Will the heroine be murdered or not? Or they engage in fearful or fear-causing activities such as bungee jumping. Uh, they like to watch people putting themselves into dangerous situations just like uh, Formula One racing or Evil Knievel, the stuntman uh, in the circus, the tightrope walker. There's a little pleasure in fear, as long as you're watching someone else. <laughs> uh, or you may do it, yeah. You may, you may go bungee jumping to, to have a sense of fear. Um, there's some pleasure in fear also, but the kind of fear that Krishna inspires, there's no pleasantness in it. It's the fear that that is experienced by sinful people, just like people go to be hanged. They have to die. It's unusual for them not to be fearful. Just recently I was told uh, there's, a, there's a narration about Bhagat Singh, whose name is somewhat famous. He's taught about in Indian history courses as a revolutionary against the British during the time of British rule of India. And he was sentenced to death. He was a young man, just early 20s, and he was a complete atheist. So the story is, he went to be hanged and he was completely fearless. But according to what I was just told, this is just what is said. But actually, the records at the time show that he was very, very fearful. People at the time of death tend to become fearful. There's even a syndrome that hospice workers and doctors are familiar with. They, they, uh, they even have a scientific name for it when people start to become extremely fearful and they start to have visions uh, of horrible creatures. And then the hospice workers or whatever, know, yeah, he's going to die very soon. Um, it's not just hallucination, it's reality. The Yamadutas, it's a horrible thing. Fear, this is the world of fear, just like we discussed just now, the name Achintya. Inconceiv inconceivability is one of the defining features of transcendence and the activities of transcendence, even in this material world, even in organized in the material world, they're also inconceivable. So just as inconceivability defines transcendence, fear defines material existence. I'll discuss that a little further on in the talk, this uh, 
Sanskrit verse or half a verse which I just quote. This fear of God. I grew up being told to fear God. Hmm. I'm grateful to have found a tradition that emphasizes love of God over fear of God. Although fear of God, it's not a bad start. It's a, it's a good start. In Proverbs, in the Bible, it said that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. You've got to be a fool not to fear God. If you think, oh, I can just do whatever I like, I can get away with it, then you're, you're a fool. You're not wise. Uh, in science, there's so much study of cause and effect. The third law of thermodynamics for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So it works. Also, in the field of karma, what goes around comes around. You can't get away with it. You think you can get away with it? You can't. That's another reason why people don't want to believe in God, because they want to think that they can get away with doing all the evil things that they do. But they become very fearful at the time of death, because they have some realization at that time that they're going to have to pay for all their sinful activities. For these sinful people, Krishna comes in the form of death and not pleasant. So it's the beginning of wisdom to fear, fear God. And don't be... Actually, we shouldn't cause any harm to others or do anything that violates the laws of the state, if the laws of the state are in line with the laws of God, which often they're not. But we shouldn't be bad. That's a basic thing that should be inculcated in children. Uh, why not, if you can get away with it? Why not? Because there is a higher order. There is the order of God. He causes fear to who? To the wrongdoers. He has no inherent bad feeling to anyone. He's Suhridam Sarvabhutanam. He is the best friend of all living beings. But for some living beings, because of their wrongdoing or their bad nature, for their welfare and for the welfare of others who the wrongdoers cause trouble for, he causes fear. Fearlessness is when we turn toward him. Savadhaman parutya jama me kam sharnam raja hum ta sarva pape bhil moksha yashami ma shucha. Do not fear, Srila Prabhupada translates. This ma shucha. Surrender unto me only, Krishna says, giving up all other <coughs> forms of concocted dharma or even scripturally endorsed dharma. Just turn to me fully. Take shelter in me. I will deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear, Krishna says. This is the greatest gift that he has to give, the greatest boon in this material world. Varada Raja Akanshi is giving his benediction. Ma Shuchaha, do not fear. There's fearlessness in his shelter and fear by turning away. When we turn away from him, we get an opposite kind of consciousness and we enter the world of fear. Now another <coughs> name that came up just recently, uh, we had a chincha just before this, and then just before that was anagha. So just two names ago, anagha, sinless. One meaning of the name anagha is who frees people from sin. He frees people from sin, but he doesn't fail to punish the sinful, those who deliberately turn away from him. So it's all 
clear if you turn to him, fearless. If we turn away from him, then turning away from him means our inclination to sin, to perform bad activities, that automatically becomes manifest. We create fear. He creates fear, that's the, name of the meaning of the name Bhaya Krit. But we create this situation in which he feels himself obliged to create a fearful situation for us. Wrongdoers are the foolish, the lowest among mankind, persons who think themselves very learned, but for all their learning, they don't turn toward Krishna or they may deny Krishna, so then the, their actual knowledge is covered by Krishna's illusory energy. And those who fully partake in the nature of demons. For an elaboration of this verse from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 15, please study uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We also, and there are so many statements in Bhagavad Gita which uh, substantiate this point in various ways. Evam pravartitam chakram nanu varta yati haya ya aghayar indriyara mo mogham parta sajivati In this verse comes the term aghayur, of the meaning of the sinful. Those who are sinful, they don't follow the path prescribed by Krishna and they live their lives uselessly in illusion. So this is the world of sin and therefore of fear. An insect went in my eye. That's right. Tanmaya yato buddha abajetam bhaktyaikaye sham guru deva tatma. Uh, one of the translations Srila Prabhupada gave of this verse, fear arises when a living entity misidentifies himself as the material body because of absorption in the external illusory energy of the Lord. When the living entity thus turns away from the Supreme Lord, he also forgets his own constitutional position as a servant of the Lord. This bewildering, fearful condition is affected by the potency for illusion called Maya. <clears throat> Therefore, an intelligent person should engage unflinchingly in the unalloyed devotional service of the Lord under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master whom he should accept as his worshipable deity and his very life and soul. <clears throat> so, fear. Why, how does it come? When we turn away from Krishna and we get absorbed in the illusory potency. And in this verse, it also gives the solution that we should turn toward the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhaktiaika, unalloyed devotion, Bhaktiya, aka to Krishna under the guidance of a guru who one should accept as one's life and soul. So here we get the solution also in the verse, which gives uh, an insight into the next name coming up, Bhayanashana, who destroys fear. So this 
point of fearlessness, which comes about by being situated on the transcendental platform. This is a point that we find in the Upanishads repeatedly, which is clarified here in this verse, Bhayam Dvitiya Bhinivesha Syat, etc. <clears throat> There's no fear in transcendence. Fear is a condition of material consciousness. Transcendental reality means in the shelter of Krishna. Where there's shelter, there's no fear. Fully sheltered, fully protected. Like a child in the arms of the mother feels fully sheltered and protected. Otherwise, fear is very powerful. The child in the arms of the mother gradually becomes more and more independent. And as the child becomes more and more independent and self-reliant, becomes more and more fearful. And therefore tries to assert himself or herself. And you have to do what I say. Or showing oneself to be very tough or acting tough to try to get one's own way. Showing anger toward others. It all springs from fear. Because we identify with the body. We are afraid. So the transcendental situation is one of calmness. Naso chati na kaung chati. One doesn't lament, one doesn't desire, just calm and the shelter of Krishna. So just like the child gradually becomes more and more independent and then doesn't have the shelter of the mother, maybe emotionally, even grown men especially, they feel emotionally sheltered in their mother, but then they become shattered when the mother passes away and they feel, where do I have shelter now? So we should know where our real shelter is at the lotus feet of Krishna, who even though we have to, we can't remain babies forever, we have to be out in the world and doing things, it's a tough world, but always be sheltered by Krishna. Then bhayanashana, all fear will be destroyed. Otherwise, fear is such a strong emotion. If someone is excessively fearful, uh, then they're called mentally imbalanced. They're too, they're, they're too sh- well, one manifestation which may not be called mentally imbalanced, but you could say socially imbalanced or emotionally imbalanced is to be excessively shy and introverted and just afraid and uh, very reluctant to interact with people in general, especially people you don't know, uh, highly non-assertive. And then we get people who are very afraid of losing their money. I was just told the other day that one common symptom of dementia which is common in older people, is that they're very afraid of losing their money and they're always going and checking, is their money there, and counting it, very afraid. And there are so many different kinds of phobias. Maybe I'll talk about that in the next talk. Fear is a very powerful emotion. The Lord is bhayakrit. He causes fear. Mostly through his material energy. But he comes personally also to sort things out, sort out the demons. Vinashayata dushkritam. 
destroy the to destroy the wrongdoers. The top three avatars, they're sometimes uh, for those, well, especially those who don't know Lord Chaitanya, who is avatar asa, the essence of all avatars, they count Rama, Narasimha, sorry, Rama, Krishna, and then Narasimha as the, as the top three super avatars, the ones who are most uh, exhibiting of opulences. So they're all, all three of these are famous for killing demons. There are others also, Varaha, Parashuram, Balaram, Kalki, They make fear in the hearts of the demons. In the hearts of those who wrongfully cause fear to others, Krishna comes in his various avatars and kills them. Particularly the kings, the, the, those who take the position of rulers of men, but do so in a most cruel manner. For them, the Lord comes in his cruel avatars, or some avatars have aspects of cruelty. Ram is known for his kindness, but he killed so many demons. Krishna is known for his beauty and sweetness and playfulness, but he killed so many demons. Nrsimha is especially known for killing. Kalki is especially known for killing. And we don't, I mean, that's, that's all they did practically. That's all we know about their avatar, is that all they did was kill, 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 kill. And certainly very fearsome. The, the, uh, <clears throat> the Aryan people we learned from Srila Prabhupada, the the European people are descendants of Aryans who migrated from the land which is now known as India, descendants of Kshatriyas who fled to get away from Parashuram. Of course, there are many avatars who are not fearful, particularly Buddha is not fearful. Vamana, he didn't do anything violently, although at one time he did kick Ravana halfway across the universe. But in general, very peaceful young Brahmin boy, although he did cause fear in the mind of Shukracharya, and it was a fear that was to become reified or actualized. Also, we don't hear about any violent activities of Matsya or Kurma, uh, Dhanvantari. There are so many different avatars. Prithu Maharaj, as, a, as an ideal Kshatriya, he was strict with the demons. So, causing fear uh, is one of the reasons for the Lord to come into this world, who's the most fearsome or the most violent or the most terrible of them all? If we think about that, we'd probably think of Nrsimha. But actually, much more destructive is Sankarsha who at the time of universal devastation destroys the whole universe. <laughs> Baladev Vidya Bhushan, our Gorya Vaishnav commentator, gives a meaning uh, which doesn't follow that of 
the other commentators. He also takes biocrit to mean he who causes fear. But he gives a particular interpretation. He says that Vishnu causes the fear of being born as a jackal for those who propound that God can be understood by logic. Particularly mentioned are those of the followers of the Nyaya school, the atheistic followers of the Nyaya school. And in this regard, Baladev <coughs> quotes Anvikshikim Tarka Vidya Manurakto Nirartikam Tasyaiva Palanirriti Shrigalat Vandane Mama from the Mahabharata. Uh, there's the story of a jackal who says I was fond of vain argumentative logic. That's why I've been born as a jackal. An upcoming name, Vita Bhaya. He is free of fear. Himself is free of fear, but he causes fear to others. Another upcoming name is Bhaya Paha. He dispels all fear which is very similar to the name which we'll discuss next, which is Bhayanashana, he who destroys fear. So he's both the creator of fear and the destroyer of fear. He creates fear for those who deserve it, and he destroys fear for those who deserve to be freed from fear. He creates fear to maintain law and order. <clears throat> That's required. We see in the state also, the police are there. They're supposed to be strict to maintain law and order. There's, the, the criminal class should be afraid of them, but the non-criminal class should feel very good that the police are protecting us. So, the Supreme Lord, to maintain law and order, he has the law of karma, he comes himself, creates fear. But as soon as one turns toward him and vows not to sin, ahang tong sarva pape bhyo moksha yishami mahasucha, I will deliver you from all sin. Do not fear. And we'll plan on discussing this name Bhayanashana more in the next session. Bhayakrit and Bhayanashana, the, the cause of fear and the destroyer of fear. The two names can be contrasted. And actually, uh, several of the commentators, they treat Bhayakrit and Bhayanashana as one name, including Parashra Bhatta. We'll discuss next time. Mancha kalpata rubyascha, kripasindubyavicha, patita nam pavane bhyo, vaishnave bhyo, namo namaha. Dante nithaya chunakang, padayoni patya kripa chakaku shatameta raham ravimi, hey sadhava sakala deva, the hyad, the hyad rad, koranga chandra charane kurutana rad. Parivaratu jano yatha tata va nanamukuro na vayam vichare nama. Hari rasa vadira madati mata bhuvi vilutama natama nirvishama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.